So in Blender I'm going to make a chess rook or castle. So you'll see these little bumps at the top, they're called crenellations. Essentially um, some will have four and others will have different numbers. So I don't think it matters a great deal how many you, you put on there. Um, but I'm going to go through the process of how I would make one. So this is the picture I took and I took a screenshot which is command shift 4 and then that picture is saved down here and that'll go to my desktop. I'm going to trash that because I've already done it. You can alternatively get one from um, Google image search and make it however you like. So just call it a chess rook or a chess castle and that'll be enough. Okay so into Blender we're going to def delete the default cube so with it highlighted push x and choose delete i'm going to turn on my screen casting keys this is not installed by default so don't look for it on yours because it just won't be there that writing is a bit small so i'm going to make it larger i think that's big enough for you to read okay so clicking this red x so i'm looking from the side i'm going to insert um, and empty, go down to image, and then down the bottom left here, click align world, change that to view, and it now is pointing at me. With the mouse off to the side, I'm going to push the letter S and move my mouse away until it's bigger. So this is the frame that's going to hold my reference image. On the right side here, I click object data properties, then I click open and navigate to where uh, my work is. Now this is not where my work is, it's pretty unhelpful. Um, it's a good idea to put things in um, favorites, so I'll show how to do that. So I'm going to go through navigating to everything, and it's a bit of a pain, so I'll speed it up in the video, but I go to OneDrive, and then I go where my work is, and this is on tutorial video, I think, tutorial video and then C for chess piece beginner but I don't want to navigate here all the time I just want to add it to favorites so there's a button here the little plus add to favorites so chess piece beginner and I can come straight here anytime I want so in this place um, excuse me up one I've got reference pictures here we go castle 01 and if I want to see a thumbnail I can click that picture there as a thumbnail so I can insert that one open image and there is my castle otherwise known as a rook there is some perspective from the photo so it's curved across the top and curved across the bottom but it's a good reference start point so it'll do for what I need when we start modeling and I don't mean you know with a fancy dress on I mean starting to make something we pick a shape that is most closely related to the shape you're modeling so two spring to mind one is a circle and the other is a cylinder so if we went mesh you could start with a circle you could start with a cylinder i'm going to start with a circle and just keep it simple because it'll be a similar method to my previous video okay so from here since i haven't really done a lot i need to go save as and I'll go and use my favorites, chess piece beginner. And I don't like thumbnails, I like list view. So then I can go to my folder called models. This has my pawn in it from before. And this is going to be called rook01. And then I can go save as. Now if that's my start point, it's a good idea to do something like this. File save as. Computers luckily can do one plus one. The red color is warning you that you would be saving over the top. So if I hit plus, it's now rook02, and then I go save as, and I've got a backup copy. Middle mouse, move to the side, with the empty highlighter, G for grab, but push X and it can only go along that pinkish red axis, so it's a little bit out of the way. I'm going to add in a circle, shift A, go to mesh, choose circle. That circle, that's its width there, so if I change the view, you'll see it's got a different width. Now I could change the width over here. I can also change the number of vertices on it. Um, if I tab to edit mode, I will. this will disappear, but you'll see these straight lines. There's a vertice here, and an edge, and a vertice, and a straight line, and an edge, and so on. So I can change that if I wished to. The radius I can also change. Currently it says one meter. So if I wanted to, I could 
click and drag there and I can eyeball it. That'll do. Um, I'm going to essentially free um, eyeball most of this. So I'm going to, with the circle highlighted, I'm going to double click circle actually and go um, rook. It's a good idea to name your um, things in your scene and the empty is the reference picture. Um, in complex scenes, uh, it's essential to name things. So I'm going to grab this G and then push Z and then move up. So that's approximately the same width. It's a little bit off center compared to the picture, or the picture's off center, doesn't really matter. So G, and then Y, I'll move it across a little bit, and I hope that's about centered enough. Now I'm going to go um, and essentially make the top first. So I'm going to pivot a little bit. I'm going to push tab and you'll now see the vertices and edges. I'm going to go E for extrude and that makes a copy. Don't drop it because um, you'll end up with a duplicate and you can't even tell. See it's there but you can't actually tell. So if I push S for scale and then move my mouse in, that's the, uh, this is going to be the top wall of my, um, of my uh, rook. And then I'm going to go E, S, and F to fill. So that is the flat part. A, for highlight all, G, Z, bring it down. So it's going to come down to here. And I'm going to use a tool that I quite like. I'm going to hold down um, Option and click here. And that's, if I've done that line, it goes all the way around. If I use the horizontal line, it goes into the center. So be careful which one you are Alt clicking, or in this case, option because I'm on a Mac. <coughs> so up here there's select and there is a um, there's things like random, select random and so on but um, there is a all none invert box circle random checker deselect. There we go so I've got a whole bunch that are deselected. Now I'm going to extrude upwards, E, Z, and go, and we'll push Z to make sure it's pushed properly, and essentially all of those are my crenellations. I got way more than the picture. Um, if you want to do it differently, then that's entirely up to you. If you want to do, um, you know, three at a time, leave a gap, and then three at a time and leave a gap, that's up to you. Um, personally, I would go in face mode and push C for circle, and then click each face. Um, I might just carry on with three each face. That's just a personal choice. Whatever you think looks good. Unless, of course, you've got someone paying the bills and they demand a certain outcome. Um, I'll go with that. So remembering E for extrude and then Z for the Z axis and it locks it in. So about there is good. Actually more G, Z, bring it up. Then I want to get this outside edge, so I push 2 to get edge select, option click, and that gets my entire outside edge going back and changing to right orthographic view. E for extrude, Z for the Z axis, come down, S for scale, tighten that in, E and then Z, and then E, Z down, S for scale, and that brings it in. And I'm going to rush the next bit, E, Z, about there, and it tapers out from about halfway. So I'm going to Control R, what's happening there? Deselect, Control R, it's got something else going on here. Highlight all, M, merge by distance, none deceived. So I was pushing the wrong button, Control R. My button's compute keyboard's got a function I thought was control. Double tapping G, and then I can move that up to about here, and then I can start putting in loop cuts. One about there, and then probably a few more down in this area, scrolling at that point. So I'll take this bottom one option clicking and turning proportional editing on by pushing O, S for scale and the circle defines what area it's working. Now this fall off or its shape 
It's actually uh, what I would call convex, whereas that shape is more concave. So I need to change my fall off. I'm going to change it to sharp and see what happens. S for scale, bring it out, and you'll see it's following that concave shape. Then G to Z, bring it up just a little bit. And repeat. E for extrude, Z for the Z axis, bring it on down. S for scale. E, Z, bring that down. S for scale, bring it out. E, Z, bring it to the bottom. And if we have a look there, it looks like it's got a bit of a bump through the middle and a few other parts. So we will go into partial see-through mode. Add in Z, control R. Maybe a little loop, actually something like that. Push 3 for face mode, option click that one and S for scale, bring that in a little bit. That'll do. And I think there's a bit more of a scale in there, I think. That's a little bit tight. Add modifier subdivision surface and we'll have a look how rounded or close does that look. So that is popping out a bit more. I'll just increase what it looks like, the number of subdivisions and the levels. Um, I think if I bring that GZ, bring it up. In addition to that one, so shift option click. GZ, bring that both up. Turn it off from on screen and just get that one. GZ possibly even that one too. Option, shift option. GZ, bring them up so it's kind of even. Maybe even scale it out a bit. Subdivisions on. Make our bottom, double tap A, option click that one. E, S for scale, bring it in. E, S, click and then F to fill. And the same trick as last time, that's a little bit too round for the bottom. Push N for no, go to item, I'm going to loop select that loop and increase the mean crease, not all the way to 1, more like, I don't know, 0.8 and then push return and it squares it up quite a lot. And if there's anywhere else that needs to be really square, which I think you'd all agree the top of these crenellations need to be, um, we will highlight a lot of this. So with face mode, I push the letter C and I go around there. And if I did that, it's going to get all of those lines with the mean crease tight. So you could agree with me, I think, that we don't want that. So I'm going to double tap A to deselect all, and then option click that loop. And it's not going past it. It's actually not too bad though. Um, that looks a little annoying to do few more clicks than expected. Holding down shift otherwise you will end up not keeping the previous selection. Turn on that on screen and I will crank that out until it starts to look about the way I want it. So that's 0.72, let's go with 0.8, enter, that'll do. The next thing is each of these edges, being careful not to get the wrong edges, holding down shift as I go, I'm going to get every single one of these. Pretty boring job, won't take too long though. It wouldn't matter if I just did face select and had these ones in the middle marked, it wouldn't make much difference, but I'm just being a bit of a fuss pot. Oops, don't get stuff you're not supposed to collect. Not that one. Probably could have alt clicked or at least tried to. 
um, and I'll put that up to the same value, 0.8, because then I'll get some consistency so they're a bit squarer. And I also think I'll need to do the same thing with these sides down here. So I'll turn this off and I'll try face select. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then again, 0.8, see what that looks like, it's not too bad, looks a bit funky down there, so we'll work on that, put in a loop cut I think around, oops, control R, see how that looks, an extra loop cut can make things look good, not liking how that's working there, what to do? Let's scale this loop out slightly, so it's the same size. S for scale, bring it out, or turn proportional off. S for scale, bring it, uh, option click, S for scale, out the same size, there we go. And we don't have this weird shape going on. I want it to be the same general size. I think that looks okay, it's not perfect. And if we look at our reference picture, it does look quite tight under there, so might increase the mean crease there. Again, be consistent, 0.8, don't have to be. And then the last one, or last couple, I'll get Alt click, Option click that one, Shift Option click, or Alt if you're on a PC. And again, being consistent, type 0.8, Enter. We'll have a look and see how does that go. That's actually not too bad. I'm pretty happy with that as a as a chess piece. The bottom done. That looks all pretty reasonable. Um, increase the subdivision and it'll look even rounder and rounder. Um, I wouldn't recommend going super high if you have got low RAM because you'll crash your computer. File save as. Hit the plus and it's saved. Just like before, I'm going to color it, but in this case I might not make it black. I think the last one I made was black, so I'll make a white one. New, so I'm making them a new material slot. Completely brand new, so this is going to be white plastic. Now, a lot of these plastics will have a little bit of something different going on. Some light will actually penetrate the plastic and so if the base color is white, there's a subsurface color and I can increase that slightly and it will give me, actually this one, excuse me, not radius, I'm going to increase that. So that means some light can get into it um, and scatter a wee bit. Just makes it a little bit more realistic. Change my render engine from EV to cycles. look through the camera, press N, go to view, lock camera to view, zoom out a little bit and the camera comes out, untick that box so it's pointing in the right direction. I'm going to insert a bit of ground, I'll start with a circle, GZ bring it down, somewhere around about there, so ES have for edit mode, ES, fill, option click that one, ES, make it really big, ES, easy. mouse in the right place, scale that out, GZ bring it upwards, option click this line, control B for bevel, move my mouse away and then scroll so that gives more subdivisions but you'll also see under the wrong shading is excuse me you can't see it here 
thankfully just because of the lighting. I'm going to go shade smooth. Can't see any difference at the moment. Um, I don't really like that color. It's not really a high contrast, so I might make it um, slightly yellow or something. Um, new color, base color, make it into the yellow end. Drag it down a wee bit. Looks a bit yuck. And then I might even fart around with the world color. So at the moment the world's gray. I might uh, go into RGB and just increase the blue just ever so slightly. I can drag, come on. There we go. So that'll change the view under rendered mode. Way too blue. Should have been in the right view to begin with. It's a little bit blue, the ground's a little bit yellow. I'm going to grab that ground and bring it up, GZ. The ground. That's it, GZ. bottom and I'm going to hide my reference picture, look back through the camera, go to rendered mode. I've got the one light, if we have a look at it, it is letting a little bit that slight pinkness through. I think I've got my subsurface on the castle just a bit off. Subsurface scattered probably a bit much. Let's go 0.25 a little bit less see-through. That's a bit more opaque. I think that works. Um, I needed to probably fill in the lighting there just a little bit. So I'm going to put in an additional light. Shift A, light. I'll put in an area light. That's a bit low, GZ, bring it up. If I want it directly above, I'll bring it over to the side. You can rotate it at the um, at the subject. And look at it through rendered view, through the that view, and then that's a little bit brighter. And I can change things like this power rating up until it starts to fill it that shadow in just a little bit. I think that's a bit better. I will increase the size so it doesn't throw a shadow across the other side. It's not really though. That's actually okay. Um, I'm just going to bring it down a little bit because I think that shadow over here is a bit too harsh. So that is filling in the light just a wee bit. Okay. Remember to save before you go to render. Render, render image. Now it pops this render window. That's the time it's gone. This is the estimated time remaining. 